Hi, I'm Kiersey Allison, EMP Chair of the Arlington School Committee, and I call this meeting the regular school committee meeting of Thursday, September 7th um, at 6.30 to order. <coughs> we begin normally with public participation. However, I'm informed there's been no one who has signed up for that. So, oh, and I also wanted to welcome Ms. Ford Walker, who, or Dr. Okay. Ford Walker, who is joining us for the first time publicly on the, on the big table, mm -hmm. but we appreciate everything she's done since we actually hired her even before she was working here at the mm -hmm. So, Thank you. welcome. Thank you. Um, and I also want to, to acknowledge uh, Ms. Keyes, who is our AEA representative, and our school com our, uh, student representatives will be joining us at our next meeting. So we begin with the opening day report and summer activities. Dr. Holman. Let me get some slides pulled up. Give me one moment, and then Dr. Ford Walker will jump in. All right, hold on. That's not the screen you want. Okay, um, we've had an excellent launch to the school year, if a little bit steamy this week. And we're gonna open up with what we were working on in curriculum work, and then I'll close us out with some of the stuff we did to launch the school year. Thank you. Uh, good evening, everyone. As Dr. Holman mentioned, um, we had a very exciting summer. There was a lot of learning, uh, a lot of adult learning um, that took place, and a lot of fun. Um, each department, um, really engage teachers, staff, and leaders in a number of different experiences, and so I'll walk you through what some of those included this past summer. Um, our Diversity, Equity, Inclusion, Justice, and Belonging Department um, had 18 K-12 to teachers participate in a four-day um, virtual training, um, and this is really led in partnership with DESI and the ideas workshops that they offer. Um, and they particularly focused on the anti-racist school practices to support the success of all students um, course. In our English language arts department, we had a number of teachers that um, really prioritized looking at curriculum maps, um, also prioritized looking at curriculum, and um, in our ninth grade um, staff, they really looked at heterogeneous grouping in the initiative and took some time to think through um, what changes and implementations needed to may, be made with curriculum units and planning. Um, and they developed essential questions as well as um, norms um, for that particular uh, initiative. Also, our middle school teachers examined titles as well as looked at a number of different curricula um, to determine um, changes that needed to be made. And also we had a number of teachers that participated in Lexia training. And Lexia is um, an ELA um, offering that is um, really targeted to meet the needs of students who are performing at all grade levels. In our ELL department, um, we had some work that was done around looking at curriculum units, uh, making sure that they were aligned with DESE um, models and also making sure that there were certain state and federal documents that were um, completed and updated including parent notification forms, um, program exit letters, etc. In our history and social studies department, um, a number of teachers participated in um, looking at curricula again and revamping it and making sure that there were strong connections to our new uh, ELA curriculum, Expeditionary Learning, and um, they really spent some time making sure that there were intentional um, opportunities for students to connect uh, both content areas. And also at Audison, uh, there was work done around um, specifically AI and modern world, um, and there were some updates made to the curriculum in that area. And our health and wellness department, um, particularly at grades four and grades six through nine, there was some work done around updating um, lessons, particularly around the human growth and development units. Um, and those will be shared at a later date, um, the specific adjustments that were made. Um, in addition to that, uh, there was also a number of um, 
uh, staff members that participated in a um, experience that was centered around um, updating PE or physical education as well as um, our FACTS curricula. In our library digital learning department, uh, staff also worked on really um, identifying the Massachusetts digital literacy computer science standards within lessons and making sure that there was a strong link to those particular standards. Um, and in addition to that, they also worked on making intention, more intentional connections to the National Library standards as well. In our math and computer science department, there are sixth through twelfth grade teachers worked on orienting new staff to curriculum and the pacing guides. I mean, as you all know, there, there was a change in leadership at that department. Um, our new director, Octavia Bronner, did some work with our former director, Matt Coleman, to make sure that uh, <clears throat> there were that there was alignment made to um, that there was alignment made to some of the practices that had started uh, last year already, particularly around grading for equity and making sure that some of those conversations continued um, into this new year, although there is a new uh, leader. Um, also, there was intentional work to make sure that there were some there were some content areas that. Um, did not necessarily get lost in the in the transition um, between leaders, and what I mean by that is uh, some conversations around making sure that some of the initiatives that Mr. Coleman was in the middle of leading didn't necessarily um, falter with the new leadership. Uh, in addition to that, there was some specific work done around the cy cybersecurity curriculum, uh, and also some intentional work around uh, pacing guides. In our nursing department, there were a number of nurses that attended a great deal of training. Um, some of the training was connected to um, ensuring that topics such as emergency preparedness and medication administration um, were given due attention. Um, but also there were a number of participants that, uh, excuse me, a number of staff that participated in learning about the new SNAP health portal that is going to be piloted at Bishop and Gibbs this year. And um, also, in addition to that, we had a number of new hires in our nursing department. In our performing arts department, two teachers participated in a national project titled uh, Musician of the Month. And in this particular program, uh, it's about making sure that music education is um, embraced and that there is a deeper dive into understanding different composers, performers, and ensembles, um, and also different music styles that exist. In science, uh, there was a great deal of work also done to make sure that there were deeper connections made to our new ELA curriculum, Expeditionary Learning, um, and also there was a lot of work uh, that took place within that department to make sure that topics of diversity, equity, and inclusion um, were embedded in the experiences of students. Also, there were um, more opportunities for teachers to engage in uh, group work with one another and also um, group work in uh, making sure that group work was reflected in the learning experiences of students. Uh, in our social emotional learning department, uh, we had um, a number of staff and Dr. Holman will share this hopefully when she talks about opening day, but we had a number of staff comment on um, some of the opportunities that they experienced with social emotional learning as a result of um, our two leaders in this particular department. Um, as a result of them doing some intentional work with staff over the course of opening day and new teacher orientation um, to really experience what social emotional learning could look like in the classroom. And so this was as a result of their work over the summer to really be intentional about embedding social emotional learning and the learning experience for students. Um, they also updated some counseling and SEL curriculum, um, particularly at Gibbs, and also there was a small elementary team that did some planning around um, department time using uh, prioritizing anti-racism. Our special education department participated in a number of trainings. I won't review every single training there, but there were 30 participants that um, were able to take advantage of a number of different experiences. Allison, would you like to add to that? 
Thank you. Um, <clears throat> I know um, we've switched this year to uh, safety care for our uh, crisis intervention and um, de-escalation um, training, which is required by the state. So um, we had previously been doing therapeutic crisis intervention, but um, through this, we were able to train in district trainers. In the past, we had two trainers. We now have 16, so we're able to offer more training um, across the district and minimize disruption to schools as far as scheduling and having people out of the building and get more people um, in the training. So um, the folks who did that this summer will be leading trainings this school year. Uh, the first session begins next week. And then um, you've asked in the past about Orton Gillingham. Um, we have another cohort who took the coursework over the summer and then this year we'll be doing their um, practicum over the course of the school year. Um, and then, you know, these were some other offerings that folks participated in. Thank you. In our visual arts department, there was also um, some intentional work done around updating curriculum and updating some learning experiences. Uh, specifically, there are five new courses that were uh, being uh, worked on over the summer, filmmaking, animation, mural painting, and set design, uh, metal smithing, and jewelry making. Um, so we're super excited about the addition of those courses. And also in our K through eight uh, grades, teachers worked on transitioning from the traditional approach to teaching and learning to uh, the teaching for artistic behaviors uh, curricula. And this is a live link that you can click on to learn a little bit more about what um, that particular approach is. In our world languages department, the theme of looking at curricula continued and updating it continued. Um, and there was the creation of a new thematic unit in grade eight um, that really prioritized looking at authentic resources. And teachers uh, also researched authentic resources and developed learning sequences for existing thematic units. And just shifting a little bit to our newest departments, um, we did want to provide an update around some of the work that took place in those particular departments. So Matt Coleman, our former director of mathematics, um, who's now the Director of Data Research and Accountability, did a lot of work this summer to review systems currently in place uh, within Arlington Public Schools and also to um, identify different areas of growth around data collection, data analysis, um, and also tying systems together that are currently in place and making sure that we are using them most effectively. So some of his work included um, attending a power school university training. As you know, power school is a huge platform within the district that um, is, I would say, the center of a lot that takes place around student data development management and, and housing data. Also, uh, he met with different leaders throughout the district to gain a sense of some of their needs at the school-based level around data uh, collection, but also around how to improve processes. He also um, did a preliminary, preliminary look at school data as well as district data and started to um, identify different areas um, that uh, we will continue to look at and review in order to make progress. And also um, he did a lot of work around um, preparing the uh, school leaders and schools for the new year in terms of data and creating data folders and um, really making data more of a conversation. Uh, also, our new Family Engagement and Communications Director uh, did a lot of work over the summer to connect with families, to um, transition uh, the work of engagement to more of a central um, location, but also to uh, really strengthen and identify areas where engagement could be strengthened uh, in the district. Um, and so she is in the process of um, continuing to meet with people throughout the district to gain a sense of what the needs are um, and also to begin to work on updating um, district uh, feature offerings such as the district website um, as well as creating a communication hub. She also launched the district's Instagram page um, to further the home to school connection and also onboarded two communication specialists which will help her with this work. And finally, in our leadership development and onboarding um, department, uh, this was, uh, I would say, a really busy summer for uh, 
Kate, who is the uh, leader in this particular area, and her work really involved onboarding new leaders as well as new uh, teachers as well, um, and also onboarding new central office staff. And that included um, supporting the work of new principals um, by providing just one-to-one -one support, um, also providing more technical support as well as, as needed. And she also matched mentors with mentees um, at, and our, she supported that effort with our teachers. Do that? That was you, but I can do that. Okay. You start. So I'm going to transition to our new teacher orientation that took place uh, last week. And it was an exciting time where we were able to welcome approximately 70 new staff to Arlington um, Public Schools. And um, this took place over the course of two days where they were able to learn a little bit more about the curriculum, also learn a little bit more about systems and structures such as our evaluation and observation system. Um, they learned a little bit more about special education, um, diversity, equity, inclusion, justice and belonging, and they also had an opportunity to meet with their union representatives and work with their mentors. Um, I will say that we have a number of excited staff who are very happy to be here. Um, and they are looking forward to the work uh, ahead of them. Welcome to our new teachers. And I'm, I'll only add that we open by talking to them about our um, mission and our goals and our vision statement and the fact that growth, joy, belonging, and empowerment live at the center of what we do here in Arlington and hope that that sets a really strong tone for their entry into the work. I'm gonna talk a little bit about August Leadership Workshop and opening day and then we'll be done. So. On, at August Leadership Workshop, we were really focused on getting a better definition working for ourselves about what deeper learning is, and also digging in a little bit to some of the phrases, terms, and eventually initiatives that sort of um, are the core of our strategic plan. So our objectives are right there. Um, one of our key objectives was to complete a task together with the guidance of students. So we had a group of about 10 students who taught everybody at August Leadership Workshop, which included 53 teachers, 20 coaches, 51 administrators, um, how to dance. And that was silly and fun. And it was only about two hours of the time we spent at Leadership Workshop over two days. Uh, but it was a very fun two hours. And we learned from the students. And so the whole point of that exercise was we place the students in the position of being teacher, we place ourselves in the position of student. And as a result of that, a lot of vulnerabilities surfaced that come along with being a student that allowed us to then talk about what that experience is like. We were in leveled groups. We got to decide what our level of comfort was with this task. And so if you didn't have as high of a level of comfort, you entered later in the flash mob. Um, and we got to talk too about what the implications of that were for things like leveled grouping because then we got to experience leveled grouping and for some that was a different experience than it was for others. So we got into a lot of really rich conversations surrounding that learning task, um, but we also did a lot of very serious work. We looked at data sources in order to help schools start to think about what kinds of practices they wanted to perpetuate in their work this year. Um, as Dr. Ford Walker mentioned uh, Mr. Coleman had done a lot of intensive work over the summer to make data really easy to access and analyze for our leaders in accordance with what some of the data was in our strategic plan that we said we wanted to track as outcomes. And so they got to do some early work thinking about what their school improvement plans would have in them, um, what kinds of things they needed to focus on, took a look at where some of their greatest gaps lived, uh, and then started be the beginning work of getting a school improvement plan together, which they'll then continue into their ILTs. It's always wonderful to have the teachers there for these discussions because they can be there, there in front of their colleagues with their principals and administrators sort of sharing the message that they take away from these days and as they start their ILT, their instructional leadership team meetings. Um, so that went pretty well. We managed to pull it off. Uh, we did have a flash mob to, to launch the year at opening day. Um, and then we had some really powerful uh, panels at opening day. We had a panel with the new uh, cabinet team. We have two new members and three members who came off of that team. And so we wanted to introduce the group to everybody. So we had everybody submit whatever questions they wanted to ask us and we pulled them out of, not a hat, but a little box from food services. <laughs> um, and so we didn't know what we were getting. It was a little scary, but we answered a few questions and introduced ourselves. And then we had the students who had done that work with us at Leadership Workshop do a student panel um, for the staff and talk about what they had learned about learning and what they had learned about belonging and growth 
while they were teaching us. Um, and it was really fun to hear their reflections on the work of teaching and very inspirational to a lot of our teachers. Um, and it went really well. So mm -hmm. that was opening day. And we've had a, a hot but smooth launch. And I'll talk about that in a little bit when we do the superintendent's report. But we're really excited to start this school year and really encouraged by the tone and effort and perseverance that we've seen our educators put in over the summer. And off we go. Take any questions. Great. Thank you very much. Does anyone have any questions? Mr. Schuchman. Uh, I'm sort of curious uh, that I'm seeing the new arts uh, courses uh, at the high school. I'm wondering how much of an influence having a new facility and being able to have a place to do this is in terms of expanding and developing our art curriculum. Do you know about that at all? Uh, no. I know it's impactful. <laughs> yeah. um, I mean, they, could, they couldn't offer some of these courses if they didn't have the resources they have in the rooms mm -hmm. that are in the art, new art wing. Um, but I'd have to ask Leo. What that's <laughs> gonna be. Yeah. No, I, I, I'm really thrilled to see it, it appears to be a product of the hard work we did to get the building uh, improved. It, it looked like things we weren't able to do in the past. And I, I think that's really an important story to be telling. That, uh, the investment we're making in, in this building is paying off and improved teaching and learning. Mm -hmm. I think the collaboration, the, the sort of co-collaboration between departments in that department to offer some of these classes is really exciting because it highlights uh, the nature of, the importance of interdisciplinary work if you're gonna do deeper learning work. And we can't do that kind of interdisciplinary work if we don't have facilities and resources like the ones we have at the high, yeah, new high school. But the design layout, too, is uh, specifically meant to foster that as well. Mm -hmm. Mr. Thielman. Thank you. Dr. Ford Walker, welcome. Thank you. My question is thank, thank you for this uh, report on all of the professional development. Do you, I mean, uh, you inherited some of this, I imagine. Are you starting to think about how all of this work in professional development um, connects with changes in student performance or changes in student life? Uh, that's a great question because there, there, there was a lot of professional development that took place over the summer. Yeah, it's a lot of which, stuff. Which is great, which is wonderful. I think the question now is how impactful uh, is it going to be uh, on student learning and also student experiences? And so I would say that I'm definitely in a place now where I'm entering the space of really looking at what's the impact. Um, also, there was a you know financial implication to some of these experiences as well. Yeah. And so looking to see um, if there are ways to make sure that we're getting the most that we possibly can um, in order to uh, enrich the experiences of students, but also in order to make sure that we're being fiscally uh, responsible too. So I'm in that process of <clears throat> looking at that. That's a big question. Great, thank you. That's a good answer. Thank you. Mr. Cardin. Thanks. Um, so I see that grading for equity is mentioned in a couple of places, and we've heard about that before. Um, I'll mention it later during future agenda items, but I think it would be good to have a deeper dive on sort of what work you're doing, what work you're finding meaningful, what you're focusing on, because there's so many different aspects of that. Yeah, Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Sexton. Thank you for this report. I just wanted to highlight my appreciation um, for the paraprofessional guidebook that came up um, quite a bit <clears throat> in some negotiations, and I think that um, you know providing that and and having that professional expectation help also helps those them to feel very supported and a member of the community so I appreciate the work that went into that I will also I we didn't have this in here but name that we had for the first time some professional development specific to paraprofessionals on opening day and professional development specific to administrative assistance on opening day mm -hmm. that's never happened before mm -hmm. um, and so that really helps people feel a sense of belonging when they're see, they see themselves on an agenda, and it's been nice to have the capacity to offer those supports. That's great, thank and, you. And we're also considering how do we continue to expand those offerings During as the, well, uh, and so we're looking at options for, uh, so our whole, our whole district professional mm -hmm. development days that happen throughout the year, I think there's six of them, we're looking at how can we make sure that some of those offerings are also specific to Paris as well. That's fantastic. Okay. Anyone else? Um, Okay, I had one comment. Um, so first, I appreciate, well, actually two comments. One on the health, when you said the SNAP, there's like a SNAP thing here, that 
the, for the nursing, they talked about using the SNAP health portal. Is this different from the mass SNAP health um, nutrition benefits? I mean, it's just a coincidence yeah, in names. That's what the platform's called, SNAP. Right, Platform, but it's, just, it has no relation. Okay, nope. okay, I was just wondering. Because um, it wouldn't, it's not totally out of the realm of possibility that they could be the same, but okay. Um, and then the second is, I could tell there were a bunch of links in the, uh, the document. They don't, work <coughs> yeah, they don't work for us, and I'm assuming they won't work for the, the public. And I think this is partly a, a Novus thing. And what I'm wondering mm -hmm. is if it would be possible to just capture all the links, links that, so they could just be cut and pasted if you want to go you know, at the very end of the document for each, yes. uh, you see what I'm saying? That you know, it have for each section, you just put down what the links were so that if it doesn't come through and whatever you're looking at, at least you can see what they are and cut and paste them into Absolutely. your own browser. Thank you for letting me know that. So that, this is oh no, it's not you. It's it's this is a continued mm -hmm. problem. It's I think it's a tech thing that we just haven't worked out. Um, so, thank you. Okay. Um, okay. Anything more on this? No. Okay. Thank you very thank much. You. Uh, so next, we have policy updates, Mr. Schlickman. Uh, thank you. Um, we gave a brief report at the special meeting in. August, uh, so none of this is unexpected. Uh, first of all, within the group of uh, policy updates, we have four policies before the committee for first reading. Uh, however, one of them, file AC, is merely the correction of a typographical error in the policy. So there was a blank line where we were supposed to fill in Arlington Public Schools. So just making that edit is not a substantive change in policy, so I'm going to move to suspend the rules and advance file AC as amended to second reading. Second. Mm -hmm. Okay. Vote. Um, uh, is there <laughs> she gets to call that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've been absent too often. <laughs> um, does anyone have any comments about this? No, or, or concerns? Okay, so um, we can just have a regular vote because none of us are um, remote. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Yes. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, that passes uh, seven that, zero zero. And now that we've suspended the rules, uh, we're now on second reading for ACI move approval. Okay, second. I mean, any any discussion? No. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, that also passes unanimously. Okay, if you recall, we were working on ACA, uh, which uh, was in terms of safe and supporting school environment, and at the request of the policies committee, we forward the. Uh, proposed policy to Doug Heim, who is looking to uh, the courts. There's a case right now, Foot v. Ludlow, that was decided in favor of the district that is under appeal, will be heard uh, sometime this month, and he'd like to see what happens there before he recommends uh, policy amendments to us. So, that, that's sitting on the side until that happens. File ACA-E, uh, what we're looking to do here is place the DESE guidelines into the policy manual. Uh, this is just sort of a transparency uh, tool so that it's clear for anybody looking in the policy manual where some of these decisions concerning safe and supportive school environment are coming from. Because what we, all the things that we've been doing have either been uh, grounded in federal law, state law, state regulation, or MIAA. Um, the second policy up for review is J. Uh, I just lost it. J. J. E. Co-curricular and extracurricular activities. We are adding 
the requirements for athletic participation uh, from the MIAA. We must do this in order to participate with MIAA. So in terms of clarity, uh, we're putting the language uh, about participation uh, uh, according to gender identity into the policy. Uh, the third policy then before us is a revision of the uh, nutrition and wellness policy and the uh, health department has been working to bring our current policy to align with uh, federal uh, free lunch standards and state nutrition policies. Um, and and if that will be back up for a second reading at the next meeting. Uh, so that is the first read for those three policies. Okay. Um. Does anyone have any comments or questions about any of these policies at this time? Um, Morgan? Just on the wellness sure. policy, some of the, um, the edits aren't showing up on track changes. Like there are definitely things that were changed in here that aren't in this redlined copy that's in Novus. Hmm. Um, so. Does the policy read correctly or is it? It looks, I mean, it reads, yeah, it reads yeah. fine. So I think it's good. I think just we want it, it's important that people know that mm -hmm. there are additional changes that were made from the first, from what we have currently to what we would adopt that aren't like redlined in the. Yeah, we were working on multiple documents. Yeah. So it's, it's entirely possible that things aren't read that, that are actually changes. So we'll try to go and fix that and get that to the committee. Well, and, and just update it in Novus, so if anyone's looking yeah. for it mm -hmm. in the next couple of days, mm -hmm. they can find the updated, yeah. the corrected version. Okay, any other comments or questions, Ms. Axton? Um, so also on the wellness policy, and I don't even know if anyone actually knows the answer to this, um, the classroom celebrations will be food free. It was my understanding that that was the intention and practice for a while, mm -hmm. and so just to understand that this is codifying that mm -hmm. yes okay um, so my follow-up question is well it was my understanding that that was the intended practice it feels like it is not universal so just as this policy um, is approved presumably at our next meeting um, that there's a way to to share that out with staff yep. and that everybody that this, there's been enough mm -hmm. it on our communicate this list right now thank you very much Anything else? Okay. Um, then so we go to the next agenda item, which is policy related as well. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the next one is a motion to, oops. Where are you? Sorry, I didn't see that they had written all this stuff out. Yeah. Okay. Where's the, oh, uh, there it is. Okay. So. Mr. Schlickman. Okay. Um, in going through the policy, first of all, we found Dr. McNeil in there, and we found a couple of references to assistant superintendents, and we knew that we wanted uh, Dr. Ford Walker to be in that one spot, and uh, there were places where assistant superintendent should now be deputy superintendent. But even more critical is that we only have three more meetings after this in this building, unless the... Uh, uh, high School Building Project Committee tells us otherwise. We're moving over to Millbrook Drive. So our address will no longer be 869 Massachusetts Avenue. We'll have a Millbrook Drive address. And rather than having the policy committee and the school committee vote to edit all the policies that list our address, that this motion would allow the administration to do this administratively. So I move that the Arlington School Committee authorizes the superintendent to make administrative changes to policies containing the title <coughs> assistant superintendent and any policy containing the street address of central office. Second. Any further discussion? Thank you for doing that. Yes. yes. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 <clears throat> any opposed? Any abstentions? Nope. So that passes unanimously. And that completes policy. Okay, so moving on, 
we have a discussion of the timing of the superintendent evaluation materials. Uh, so I didn't realize I was driving this, but the reason that this was brought for you, brought before you, is that my understanding is CBI, or C, yeah, CBI requires us. Uh, it, it details all the time, all the timeline for when the superintendent evaluation process occurs, and the first. Thing that happens is that the superintendent is supposed to have materials ready for us uh, at the next school committee meeting and we wondered if it would be possible to move that to did we want sometime first, in October sometime in October because of when accountability and data right available. Um, and yeah, it's, it's based on when the accountability data is available. Mm -hmm. Then the superintendent would do a presentation on these materials the second meeting in October. Uh, so I wanted to find out how people feel about this and... Perfectly. Okay. Uh, Mr. Perfectly fine with me. I mm -hmm. think okay. I'm wondering, it just occurs to me as you say this, is if we should sort of amend this policy to have words in there like generally or something. I, maybe the policy and procedures subcommittee, because you can't really predict when data will be available. Yeah, it's, it, we certainly can do that. Right now it was a little. I'm not, I'm sorry, I'm not doing it, I'm not doing it right. Which, right. Is, yes. which one has it's all the data? It's CBI, it's doesn't CBI. Have well that's what, C, so that was the other thing I was going to say. The reason I'm being very hedgy about all the timelines and everything is that the CBI that is in our online policy manual is not the correct version. Oh. Well, there uh, you go. Okay. And I hadn't had a chance to work out where the correct version is and then make sure it gets uploaded. When did but you change it? We did change, change it. At least in 2018. That's what I was finding in my notes, so but I wanted it. to yeah. reference. But, so this is what's not in there right now is not accurate? No, so, it's not accurate at all. Oh. Mr. Cardin. But we did change it because mm -hmm. when, when Paul and I, and I don't know who the, was it Bill was the Bill. third member, were advised by MASC on revising the policy, we adopted the standard MASC policy because they said they recommended that any details about the process be negotiated with the superintendent in her con in their mm -hmm. contract. Uh, we took out all the details. Okay, I thought we just I forgot that. So so that would be the stock MASC policy should be prepared. So do whatever yes. we want. Yes, yes. So it so is. we can do whatever we want. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Have at it. Have a good time. Sure, Keep us policy. posted. Let us know. Yep. Okay. Just, right. okay. Just, just what policy is CBI? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, basically, do you remember that, Paul? <clears throat> I do remember that discussion. That, that may yeah, have been. I, I, sort of, I sort of remember this yeah. now. <clears throat> but mm -hmm. I do wonder, as not even a, a new chair, that it's helpful to have some guidelines. And I wonder if we want to have, like, CBI, not E, but I don't know. Mm -hmm. R e would be appropriate. No, we yeah. already have CBI. Oh, we have an E. Oh. Yeah, we have an E, so it can't be E. Anyway, CBIR or whatever that has an, yeah, it, we should. Mm -hmm. I don't, I, oh, I, anyway, so I'm confused by this because it ends up leaving it totally open and there's nothing to refer to. And that makes me nervous about continuity from year to year and being uh, fair and uh, equitable from year to year, so I'm kind of wondering. I, I do now remember us talking and, and deciding this, but I'm not. What does it say in her contract? <laughs> Nothing. I don't, it doesn't, Basically, it doesn't. it'll be negotiated with you all. Yeah. <laughs> that, that you will evaluate me. Yeah, so, okay. Um, I don't know, do we want to throw this to policy? I mean, I can figure things out with the, with the superintendent this year, mm -hmm. but I am concerned about this in practice, and I'm raising this concern to you, and I'm asking, do we want to kick it to policy? Do you want me to come up with something? What do you want to do? Mr. Steele. I think you can kick it to policy, and you can kind of send a suggestion to us based on your experience. Okay. I will pull the MASC policy on CBI, which, assuming that's what we adopted, 
and just as a pro forma thing, maybe bring it back at the next meeting so it is voted and in place in the book, oh, and then it, we can go from there. No, but I, I think, I think it is. I think it is. I think it's accurate. I, I just oh, didn't accurate. know. This yeah. is accurate. Yeah. CBI is accurate. Okay. The, the, the chair was, is saying it would be helpful for future chairs to have a timeline some in some place. Yeah, or okay. at least a suggestion a of a timeline. procedure some. so that yeah. a, a timeline and a procedure. But I think it's something things. the subcommittee can look at. Yeah. Yes. We can. Because, yeah. Mr. Cardin. Yeah, I mean, I, it, it doesn't matter that much, but the intent was that it would be written down. It just wouldn't be in the policy. It would be an addendum to our contract. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter where it's written down. I don't think that much. It's a little bit more flexible when you're changing superintendents to you know, they may come in with a different different idea of when the evaluation should be. And then it would have to go to policy if that person insisted on that. So I don't care. Yeah. But I'm I'm thinking that was the, that was the recommendation from NHC. Okay. I'm thinking that it could be a suggested timeline just so sure. there's something to do and then it could be picked up and adopted into the superintendent's contract or mm -hmm. changed, but uh, just as a suggested timeline. Ms. Exton, did you have a question? Well, I just was thinking about when Dr. Homan started and some of that, we did have a conversation about mm -hmm. when we were going to do this and it might look different based on, um, and then we sort of have gone back to, I think, the timing that you had been doing previously. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess, the, yes, the open-endedness I see is unclear, but I also think that we should have some flexibility to work with the superintendent. Okay, so it sounds like it's getting kicked to policy, alternate suggestions, we're staying with the old policy, but maybe we add some sort of outline or something uh, as an addendum, and we will, I will work out the process with the superintendent, and I think that's it. Right. Okay. Great. Okay. Next, superintendent's report. All right. Considering we just did our opening report and it's the opening of school, there will be a little bit of redundancy here, um, and a little bit of additional information that didn't make it into your deck, but I will make sure it gets uploaded into Novus. So, first of all, welcome back to school, everybody, and back to school committee meetings. Um, as I mentioned, we had a wonderful opening day, got to hear from some students and think about uh, deeper learning and what that means for our work together this year. I want to say welcome to all of our new staff and any new families who have joined Arlington in the past um, couple of months since we were last here, and welcome to our school committee meetings, Dr. Ford Walker. It's great to have you here. Um, I, we're really excited this year at the start of the school year about our new APS uh, Before School Breakfast Club. We are open for breakfast at all of our schools at 7.30 at the <coughs> elementary level, 8 o'clock at the secondary level. Um, in order to make sure that this is well-staffed and well-programmed so that we can have some games and do some activities with everybody, we've got some incentivized pay for the programming leads and a lot of our um, teaching assistants are, have taken this up because it gives them a little bit extra in the paycheck each, each week. And um, as I said, we are open a half hour before school starts at all schools, and we are asking only that families make sure that their students take breakfast because that's part of how we subsidize the program. Um, if students get breakfast, we get some of a reimbursement from the state for that. So the only rule about Breakfast Club is that you come, you are happy, and you eat breakfast, uh, and then you go to class with a full stomach. So we're really enjoying this. We had a lot of excitement about it from families, and we had over 300 students signed up before the first day of school. So it's going well. Um, I wanted to give a few updates. Uh, Dr. Ford Walker actually already updated you on a few of these things, so I'll go quickly. Just about work that's been going on in our new department which, of communications and family engagement. Um, it's been really great to have a little added capacity in this area. We are working on systems for establishing monthly family newsletters and making sure all of the information that needs to be in there gets in there from all the different departments. It's been hard over the past few years to make sure we've got everything and to try to remember everything. So we have a few more sort of systems to make it easier to remember some of those things. 
Um, a conti we're continuing the weekly leader logs to the administration, uh, with just with a little bit more collaboration around what needs to be in there. That's a weekly communication that I send to all of the administrators in the district. Um, I've been doing that since uh, I arrived, but it's been sometimes hard to remember to get all of the things in there. So that's where we share any new procedures with administrators, any new expectations that are coming down the pike, any um, updates or like, hey, this is on the horizon and we sort of give a layout of the week of any district meetings that they need to attend. And we're working on approximately monthly newsletters to staff using some of those same systems. Um, as I said, we held some first ever training with administrative assistance so that we make sure we have a welcoming environment for families to walk into and make sure they know how all of our systems and information systems are working and how to use them to share information out. Uh, they'll be getting some training on how to also update their websites, their school websites, so that they can be on top of making sure those school websites have any information families need on them. Um, we've hired a new engagement specialist. This is a new term for the registrar role. So we just changed the name, the title of the registrar to uh, engagement specialist. So welcome to Makaya Healy. She's going to be our new engagement specialist. Um, and thank you to West Pierre for getting this department off the ground and going and getting a lot of really great work done so far. Um, enrollments are in your materials and I wanted to speak a little bit to the heat this week. Um, as everybody knows, we had six schools who went home early today because of extreme heat conditions. That was definitely the right decision um, for today. Conditions climbed up to 93 to 98 degrees in several classrooms in those schools where we had sent students home. We only sent students home in schools that do not have air conditioning in, in a majority of the classrooms in the school. Um, we were doing, we've been doing frequent spot checks of heat in significantly impacted areas starting on Tuesday. We've we deployed a whole bunch of thermometers to our administrators who were moving around the buildings with them, taking spot checks of heat and sending data over to the central office throughout the last couple of days. We've been rotating students and classes to cooled spaces where we can for a break from the heat. A lot of our offices and libraries are air conditioned or our central spaces like cafeterias, our lobbies even are air conditioned and we've been using them, trying to get people a little bit of a break so it's, they're not there for a sustained period in the really hot space. Uh, we were over 90 degrees by 10 a.m. in lots of our schools today, especially on some of those top floors. A lot of our rooms, even with air conditioning, were at the 80 degree mark or 85 degree mark. AC was having trouble keeping up, um, and we did hit 98 on the third floor of Thompson, like I said. So for tonight, we have a plan. Our plan for tomorrow is to be in for the full day. We're going to do everything we can to make sure that happens. Um, we've done a few things tonight that we can't, that we couldn't do earlier in the week because the overnight temperatures were so high that it really wouldn't have done anything. Uh, we are placing fans in front of our windows. Our custodial crews, are, as they're going through rooms tonight, are placing a fan in front of the window to pull the cooler outside air into the room so that we have more outside air circulating through the building. We also typically have our ventilation systems off overnight. They're sort of automatically turned off and then they turn back on. It helps save some energy. Tonight they're going to run all night long. That will pull more outside air that's supposed to get down to 70 degrees overnight into the building and it should be fully, we should be able to do full air exchanges with that running um, throughout the coolest part of the night which should cool off some of those indoor spaces. And we've also opened the dampers up on those systems where we're able to do so. Some of the decision making factors as we were thinking about heat and time because obviously um, any loss of learning time in the first week of school is deeply unfortunate and we really didn't like I don't take decisions like that lightly at all uh, but we were thinking about the amount of extended time students would spend in extreme heat the number of visits we had had to the nurse due to heat related illness uh, earlier in the week and we had had several visits from staff and students to nurses um, experiencing mm -hmm. some heat related exhaustion or illness uh, temperature readings that we were taking, like I said, throughout the day and also some of the after school care implications for families. Um, it's not safe to send a student home to an empty house in extreme heat, especially if that house doesn't have air conditioning. So safety looks lots of different ways. We have to think about all those different versions of safety when we're making decisions like this. Um, so like I said, the plan for tomorrow is a full day of school. We're hopeful that with it getting down to 70 degrees overnight tonight, um, that we'll be in good shape to open up. and. We are sorry for the inconvenience caused uh, for everybody and for the discomfort that everybody has felt this week. Um, it was not the best way to start the year, but it's been okay and people are, the kids are upbeat and smiling and having fun even if they're moving a little slower. Happy to yeah. take any questions. Any questions? Oh. <laughs> 
-hmm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I think it was good to make the call and let mm -hmm. families know. Mm -hmm. I think the thing that was the hardest for them was being informed that it might happen. Mm -hmm. And then they were just like, I don't know what to do. It, mm -hmm. And so I think it, it was good to just make a decision, do the call. And uh, I, I think families were happy, but I didn't hear lots and lots of grumbling. No. Um, okay, what do we have next? Ah, consent agenda. Okay, this is long. All items listed with an asterisk are considered to be routine and will be enacted by one motion. There will be no separate discussion of these items unless a member of this committee so requests, in which case the item will be considered in its normal sequence. Warrant number 23304, $624,184.99, dated uh, 6 27 23. Warrant number 23312. Four hundred and ninety-four thousand nine hundred and forty-five and nineteen cents, six dated six thirty twenty-three. Warrant number twenty-four zero zero nine, uh, one hundred and sixty-three thousand zero uh, ninety-two dollars and ninety-six cents, dated seven twenty-five twenty-three. Warrant number twenty-four zero twenty-six, uh, two hundred and seven two hundred and twenty-seven dollars five hundred and Two hundred and twenty two hundred and twenty seven thousand five hundred and six dollars and fourteen cents dated eight eight twenty three warrant number twenty four zero twenty thirty six five hundred and twenty five thousand one hundred and ninety one dollars and eighty cents uh, dated eight twenty two twenty three warrant number twenty four zero fifty two Two hundred and sixty thousand seven hundred fifty eight dollars and seventy two cents. They did nine six twenty three school committee minutes of June fifteenth, uh, twenty three school committee special meeting minutes uh, of August eighteenth, twenty three and school committee special meeting minutes of August thirtieth, twenty three all for approval. Well, that was the longest uh, <laughs> agenda we've had in quite some time. I move approval. Okay. <laughs> Second. Okay, there is no discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any, op any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, so that passes unanimously. Now we have subcommittee and liaison reports. Uh, budget, Mr. Cardin. Uh, nothing to report. Okay, community relations. Thank you. Um, so I have reposted the draft school committee chat, which I had presented in the spring. Um, and then as I was looking at the schedule that we had created, um, Saturday, September 23rd is town day. And I know that a lot of school committee members have other obligations on that day. And so I, um, I had proposed in here that we cancel it. I'm also happy to try to reschedule, um, that first for a different weekend, but I just wanted to point it out since it is in two weeks. Opinions? Okay. Anyone have any comments or anything? Cancel it. Mm. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 I just, I, yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, no, I was definitely gonna not have it that date, I guess, is yes. reschedule versus just not have it at all. Not have it at all. Okay, thank you. I. I think it could be rescheduled, okay. but it's also letting people know that just because it has a focused topic doesn't mean you can't talk about the thing somewhere else. So even though, you know, if, if we cancel it, just make sure people understand they could ask questions about that topic somewhere else. Yes. Okay. All right. I'll, work, I'll check in with um, Ms. Diggins and Dr. Holman, too, just because we had worked on having an administrator there, so rescheduling okay. to make sure that somebody's available. Right. Okay. okay. All right, thank you. Okay. Uh, curriculum accountability. Um, we're meeting next week on Wednesday at 2.30. Okay. Facilities, Mr. Thielman. 
the assistant superintendent for finance and operations and I are trying to find a date. You got to get back to me with some dates. Uh, and so uh, once we have some options that fit our mutual schedules, then I'm going to reach out to the subcommittee to meet and we're going to talk about the capital, the, the district submission to the capital planning committee. Okay. Uh, policy? We have already discussed. We've already talked. Okay. Uh, building committee? We met. And uh, as I said last week, the turnover of phase two is October 30th. There'll be a more formal communication placed on the uh, website and uh, the superintendent will get something out too next week, but it's October 30th. Everything but the Mononomy preschool will be done. Okay. Um, Ways on reports? Anyone? No? Announcements? And future agenda items, Mr. Cardin, I know you had one. Yes, so I request that at some point we hear a presentation on um, the district's uh, exploration of grading for equity. Sorry, I have to write it down. Okay. And Ms. Keese, did you have anything? No. Okay. No, just, just back in the swing of things. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Mr. Schlickman. Yeah, if we could uh, arrange to meet some of our new folks uh, in leadership positions uh, live and in person before us at some point in the near future so we know who they are and they know who we are. Okay. Anything else? No. Um, we do not have a executive session, so do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. second. <laughs> okay. Well, a lot of practice. Want to hang out? Well, you just like hanging out <laughs> here. We like each other. You know? Okay. All in favor? Yeah. Uh, Aye. Yes. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, we are adjourned. <laughs>